Blackmagic Design recently sent me the DaVinci Resolve micro color panel for a review and I got really excited about it because most likely at some point I would have purchased the mini panel anyway but since this panel has its own unique characteristics it was great to add it to my equipment lineup. Of course we are going to take a general look at the panel's features but the main goal of this video is to help you decide whether you actually need the micro color panel. Hopefully this video will help you or make clear decision on whether you need it or not. The Blackmagic Design Micro Color Panel is primarily designed for use while traveling or on set. Its overall build quality clearly conveys that it's positioned as a professional tool. Despite being compact, the panel does not feel cheap or hollow. Although it is quite lightweight due to its plastic body, it stays firmly on the desk thanks to the anti-slip pads on the bottom. The trackball moves smoothly with consistent resistance and do not give the impression of a cheap control surface. The knobs are firm enough while still providing precise tactile feedback for fine adjustments. The buttons have a clear confident press neither too soft nor too stiff, I kinda like this in between, offering a very balanced response. Overall, despite being a portable product, the micro color panel feels durable and reliable. It's also compact enough to be carried in your bag alongside a laptop or an iPad. The slot at the top allows you to place your iPad and start grading immediately. Although it is designed for mobile workflows, in my opinion, it performs just as well on a desktop setup and does not fall short compared to its larger siblings. Before we take a look at the panel itself, I think it's also important to mention a few things up front. The micro color panel, which is the latest addition to the mini and advanced panels, can only be used with DaVinci Resolve 19 and later. If your intention is to use it with other software, unfortunately it will not fit your workflow. As I mentioned earlier, the micro color panel is designed for both mobile and studio use. Using the included USB-C to USB-C cable, you can connect it directly to a desktop computer and work in a stable, latency-free manner. It also has a built-in battery and it allows you to connect via Bluetooth. By activating Bluetooth using the button on the back of the panel and pairing it with your laptop, the panel becomes ready to use. It's super simple and fast. The USB-C cable also charges that internal battery. Since the panel is perfectly integrated with the structure of Resolve's color page, it is automatically recognized when Resolve is launched, with no additional setup or mapping required. From a connectivity standpoint, it's completely hassle-free. Now let's take a closer look at the layout and the buttons of the micro color panel. At the heart of the panel, there are three main trackballs with surrounding rings. These represent lift, gamma and gain in the primaries panel. Using the trackballs, you can physically and intuitively adjust shadows, midtones and highlights simultaneously. The rings around the trackballs control luminance values, making fine adjustments far more precise than what is typically possible with a mouse. Directly above the trackballs are buttons divided into three groups. On the left side, there are play, wipe and grab still options, allowing you to quickly capture stills in the gallery and compare them with other images. In the upper middle section, you will find highlight, viewer, cursor and select buttons. The highlight button toggles the highlight mode on and off. Pressing viewer switches the image to cinema viewer mode. The cursor and select buttons are used primarily for keying. Just below these are dedicated reset buttons for lift, gamma and gain. On the right side, there are buttons for adding nodes, windows and keyframes. On both the left and right sides of the panel, there are two additional columns of button groups. The left side includes global controls such as copy and paste, undo, redo, delete and reset, which are frequently used during grading. There is also an offset button here. When you press it, it lights up green to indicate its activation. In offset mode, the gain trackball functions as the offset wheel, while the rings on the other two trackballs are mapped to temperature and tint controls. And the right side is fully dedicated to navigation. Buttons such as previous node, next node, previous clip and next clip turn out to be far more valuable than I realized before using the micro color panel. Having these controls directly under your fingers provides a significant speed boost on your color grading. Alright, in the bottom right area, in addition to navigation controls, there are playback buttons for stopping, rewinding and fast forwarding the footage. At the very top of the panel, there are 12 horizontally aligned 
endless rotary knobs. Pressing these knobs resets the corresponding parameter, which is one of the best features of this panel in my opinion. These controls also represent the parameters found in the primary panel. The Y, Lift, Gamma and Gain knobs adjust contrast values in their respective tonal ranges, while the remaining knobs control settings such as contrast, saturation shadows and highlights. There are also a few special buttons that I intentionally saved for later, as this is where the panel's real power becomes evident. In the lower left section, you will find the user, loop and shift keys. The user button is not currently active, Blackmagic Design plans to enable it via a future software update allowing users to assign a custom command to this key. The real highlight here is the shift keys. Holding a shift key while pressing another button triggers an alternate action. For example, holding shift up and pressing add node creates a parallel node, while holding shift down and pressing add node creates a layer node. Similarly, you can move a window by holding shift up and using the gain trackball, while adjusting size and the softness of the window with the rings. Holding shift down and pressing add window enables tracking for the selected window. As these examples show, the shift keys unlock many additional key combinations. And I can't talk about all the key combinations here on this video and I can cover every single one of them. And it is not realistic to memorize all of them at first. So I recommend keeping the microcolor panel manual open while you are working with the microcolor panel. I will leave the link to the PDF manual in the description. Okay. To summarize, one of the strongest advantages of the micro color panel is how much it speeds up the color grading process. Being able to control multiple parameters simultaneously also helps you make decisions more quickly. Another major advantage is the high precision of the trackballs and knobs. Instead of constantly chasing sliders with a mouse, you can stay focused on the image itself. And I think that's the most important thing. But of course, there are some downsides as well. First, it takes time to get used to the panel itself. There's definitely a learning curve. Memorizing all key combinations is not easy at the beginning. And additionally, when working quickly, it is possible to accidentally touch one of the trackballs and resulting in an unintended adjustment that you might not immediately notice. This means you need to work with extra care. Another limitation is that the panel works with Davinci Resolve, which may be an issue for some users. It also has fewer features than the mini and advanced panels, but this is expected and aligns with its intended purpose because the micro color panel is designed primarily for mobile workflows, not to handle every aspect of color grading on its own. So who is this panel for? In my opinion, if you are considering investing in this panel, you should already have some interest in color grading. But if you spend very little time on the color page and you want to do things very quickly, the micro color panel is not going to be for you. However, if you are a professional who is frequently on the move, this panel can be an excellent investment for you. Also, my overall experience with the panel was really fun. Once I got past the learning phase, I even found myself looking for the certain buttons on the keyboard. And also it significantly boosted the confidence when I color grade. And I believe this is the secret strength of the micro color panel. It allows you to work on the color page with much greater confidence. Okay, finally, I would like to share a small tip and I think it's a good one. There's an auto color button on the panel placed quite prominently at the top which is somewhat ironic, but this button is not meant to be pressed directly. If you hold shift up and press auto color, it copies the grade from the previous clip and applies it to the current one. So in that sense, it is actually one of the most useful shortcuts on this panel. All right, I think we can wrap it up. That's it for today. I hope this video was able to answer some of the questions you may have had. If you have any additional questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. You can support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care.